A common question in radio is whether a doubling or a 3 dB increase in transmitter power can double your range. Now you may ask, should I buy a 100 watt radio or a 50 watt radio? Or you might be thinking, I should buy the 10 watt handheld radio because that's going to be much better for me than the 5 watt handheld radio because it's gonna allow me to double my range. Well, let's break down some technical concepts and see how they apply to real world radio use. So first of all, what is 3 dB? What does that mean? Well, in radio communications, dB, which stands for decibels, is a unit of measurement that expresses the ratio between two power levels. So a 3 dB increase means that the power is doubled. For example, if you increase your transmitter power from 50 watts to 100 watts, that's a 3 dB increase. If you double it again to 200 watts, that's a 6 dB increase from the original 50 watts and so on and so forth. Can you hear this 3 dB difference? Well, whether a doubling of your power is significant enough to notice depends on several factors. The first one is signal to noise ratio or SNR. This is the ratio of the signal power to the noise power. So in FM, which is frequency modulation communications, a 3 dB increase in power can improve the SNR, making weak signals more readable. Another factor is the receiver sensitivity. This is the ability of the receiver to pick up weak signals. A more sensitive receiver can better utilize a 3 dB increase in transmitter power that it is trying to receive. Noise figure, NF, is a measure of how much noise a receiver adds to the signal it processes. Now, this is also expressed in dB. So, for instance, if a receiver had a noise figure of 10 dB, a 3 dB increase in power, transmitter power, can improve the signal quality significantly, especially in weak signal areas. So I found an article on the Repeater Builder website. Roger Grady K9 OPO writes there that the effect of a 3 dB increase is more noticeable when the signal is weak and when it's in the noise. This is because FM, the receiver quieting is non-linear. A 3 dB increase can make a big difference in these conditions. And this can potentially double the signal in fringe areas. Not double the range, but double the signal. Now, here's an example of what a 3 dB difference makes when you're listening to a noisy signal. Let's look at a real world example. This is me transmitting five watts from my radio in my car on the six meter band, and you'll notice how noisy it is. Now that's pretty much unreadable. Watch what happens when I go to 10 watts. VK7HH, testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This time with 10 watts, 10 watts, a 3 dB increase. So you'll notice that whilst the signal is still noisy, it's much more readable. However, in strong signal areas, a 3 dB increase might not be as noticeable. This is VK7HH, testing with 5 watts, 5 watts. This is VK7HH, testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This time with 10 watts, 10 watts, 10 watts, a 3 dB increase. Did you notice the difference in signal? Well, as you can see, a 3 dB increase on an already fairly strong signal doesn't yield much of a gain at all. In fact, it's probably about half an S point. So why is this? You're effectively doubling your power but you're not getting a marked increase in return. Well, we need to remember that range, range and signal are different. So when you send out a radio signal, the waves spread out in all directions. And as they travel farther and farther from the source, they get weaker. This weakening happens according to something called the inverse square law. So imagine you're shining a flashlight on a wall. When you stand close to the wall, the light is bright and very concentrated in that small area. But as you move farther away from the wall, the light becomes more spread out and becomes dimmer because it's covering a larger area. Now, if you double your distance from the wall, the light is four times as dim. 
So the same happens with RF. If you double your power, you're sending out a stronger signal. However, because of the inverse square law, this increase in power doesn't double the distance your signal can travel. So say for example, if your current setup lets you communicate over a range of 50 miles, doubling your power, a which is the 3dB increase, will improve the signal strength, but it won't double the range. Instead, it might extend the range by around 15 to 20%. So you might get a new range of about 57.5 to 60 miles. As we said before, the fringe areas will get stronger and you end up with a new fringe area, which is slightly further than you had before. And that's a simplistic way of thinking about it. When transmitting a radio signal, various other factors can reduce its strength before it reaches the receiver. And these factors are known as losses. They can significantly impact the effective range and the quality of communication. The first one is path loss. That's, as we discussed earlier, refers to the reduction in signal strength as it travels through free space and spreads the signal over a larger area as it moves away from the transmitter. Obstruction loss, this occurs when the signal encounters physical objects. In cities, buildings and other structures, they can block or they can reflect the signals, leading to various different significant losses. Dense vegetation can also absorb radio waves, especially at higher frequencies and especially in winter or when it's raining and this can reduce signal strength. Hills and mountains, that's probably the most common one that we know of, can block communication, causing signal loss or requiring signals to be reflected or refracted to reach the receiver. Atmospheric loss, this is caused by the absorption and also the scattering of radio waves by the atmosphere. We see this predominantly at HF. This kind of loss can vary depending also on weather conditions and the frequency of the signal. For instance, VHF and above can be affected by tropospheric ducting for good or bad. Multipath loss occurs also when multiple signals, to, uh, sorry, when a signal takes multiple paths to reach the receiver. This can cause interference between those different paths and they can result in signal fades or even fluctuations or complete cancellation. Here's a real world example of what multipathing sounds like. This is what the sound of a multipath signal sounds like. Mobile multipath signal. As you can hear the QSB, this is the signal being received by the receiver from different reflections and multipath signals. Polarization loss, that's another one, which happens when the transmitter and the receiver antennas when they're not aligned in the same polarization plane. So radio waves, they can be polarized vertically, they can be polarized horizontally, or they can also be circular and mismatch polarization can lead up to 20 dB of loss. The cables connecting the transmitter and receiver to their respective antennas, these can also introduce losses as well, especially over long distances or if you're using poor quality cables. If you have a coax run with 3 dB of loss, guess what? That means that your 100 watt transmitter now becomes a 50 watt transmitter. And the same goes the other way around. If you receive half as much signal coming back because you've got all of this loss. Overall though, increasing your transmitter power by 3 dB does make your signal stronger and improves your range, but it doesn't double it. And by understanding all the factors as discussed helps clarify why signal strength and range are different and why the doubling of your power doesn't result in a proportional increase in range. Now you can achieve better overall system performance by watching these videos over here. This is where I discuss the best practices and the things that you need to keep in mind when choosing the right coax and antenna for the job.